Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. Who's here? Hello from Texas, Darlene, Deborah, Dawn, Anne, and the Chanel's. You guys sound like a, back, a group of backup singers. Howdy, Lisa. How are you all? How are you? It is Wednesday night, and you know what that means. A little bit of fun from my studio. And I thought I would just pop in here tonight. We'll say, Tracy time. What is that? Um, uh, hold on. Okay. Got everything going. Sleepy took a nap. Oh, I could use a nap. Yes. Turtle time from the Housewives. That's what that reminded me of. Anybody watch the Housewives of Orange County? Hello, Michigan. Uh, how are you all? So it's Wednesday night. We have a couple of minutes till 530. Jump in. Tell me uh, where you're tuning in from. Hi, early morning in the UK, Tracy. Hello from Montana. Montana is on my bucket list. Oops. Oops. All right, got that handled. Hello from Michigan with my foot up, doctor's orders. Okay, well, uh, actually, we are not going to have tap dancing lessons tonight, so you should be fine. <laughs> now, we were going to do river dancing, but uh, because you, Robin, cannot, we are going to cancel the river dance for tonight. And by the way, um, the only time I've ever river danced is uh, after a few cocktails. <laughs> And I can do it. <laughs> there we go. April from Montana. Hi, Linda from across town, who I get the fortune of seeing. She's the nicest person. Hi, Kim from North Carolina. That's where my family lives now. <laughs> Robin said, funny, I'll watch you instead. Okay, well, um, no tap dancing, and uh, I've not had anything to drink that would prompt me to river dance. Uh, but I'm still glad you're here. Hi, Patricia in Maryland. Wine with strawberries. Yum. Okay, I probably could get this picture out of my face, but I thought I would show what we're talking about. Yep, no river dancing. Oh, two-step, Darlene. I can two-step. I can dance. That is one thing I miss right now in quarantine. I miss dancing. Social distancing. I'm not quarantined. I love Texas. I love cowboy boots. I have several cowboy hats. And I love to two-step. I also love to ten-step. And I would like to... Um, dedicate tonight to Charlie Daniels who died this past weekend and I can 10 step like no others. I get it. Oh, uh, Lisa said that I chose, I chose to watch you versus our vice president today. <laughs> Thank you. <gasps> Brenda, I love to line dance. Now the line dance is now the line dances of old, like, I don't know, the old they used to be like eight steps, 12 steps, like 12 counts. Now the kids do 32, I, I 32 count. I cannot memorize 32 different steps. I love to dance. I love to dance. If music comes on, I dance. Even if nobody's dancing. Yeah. You go, girl. Met the love of my life and we two-step. Well, that's my problem. I need to go to Texas. That's my problem. Totally my problem. Okay, guys, it's 5.30. We just do small uh, 
talk. I love, we're just doing small talk and we're talking about dancing. I love to dance and it, dancing uh, is one thing that I miss. We have lots of places around here who have live music and I cannot sit when there's music on. I come from a family that dances, my whole family. My dad does the white man overbite and with these weird, weird pelvic thrusts that he thinks look really cool and hip, maybe back in his time. But my parents are like the first people on the dance floor at a wedding and the last people to leave. Brenda said she's been line dancing for 32 years. They've really gotten more difficult, but way more fun. Brenda, if you could do the new hip ones. So just so you know, I am single. But one thing I would do is go down to one of our local bar restaurants that would have country music and they would have line dancing lessons. I figure I could go do that on my own and I love it. I absolutely love to dance. I don't care who is watching. Um, I just love to do it. Anyway, it's Wednesday night. I am Tracy Weinzeffel. I am an artist, not a professional dancer, and my neighbors are finding out I'm not a professional singer, but I've gone back to working out in my garage, and I can sing as loud as I want. So I've gone back to working out. For those of you who are asking me, I religiously work out and I let that slide because I've been so busy. Um, but tonight I asked you guys, bring your questions, uh, bring whatever you'd like to talk about. But tonight we're going to talk about art journals. I'm not here to sell you anything, just here to tell you about them. But I did put them on sale in my shop on Facebook. That's the first post on my Facebook page only tonight. Um, I just have this philosophy. I'll take this off. I have this philosophy that when you get an art journal, it's so great. Like I become part of your artful journey and that's my whole goal. So that's why I'm sitting here tonight and I'm going to tell you about the journals that I love and what I'm using currently and why I fall in love with them. Now, first off, I'm going to tell you this about art journals, any journal. I don't know if you guys used to go to Borders, uh, Borders, the bookstore, before they went out of business. I don't think they're in business anymore. Uh, but I used to buy writing journals, and I would sit there and open every single journal. Nope, don't like this. Nope, the lines are too close together. Nope, don't like this. Don't like the binding. Don't. So the first thing I'm going to say about buying an art journal is find one that you're comfortable with, one that speaks to you. doesn't speak to me. It needs to speak to you. I'm going to tell you what speaks to me, but um, Lisa said, I love this time. I do too. Um, so I miss Borders too. When Borders went out of business, I do like this one particular writing journal, and I used to write a ton. I've written through some very hard times, and I have it all down in writing, and I actually want to pull those out and consider doing something public with them, not you know airing my dirty laundry. I don't do that. But... Um, I, I, Christina, you ordered those for me. Yes, those should be there. Um, so I am very personal with my journals. When Borders went out of business, I went back in and ordered all the, or not ordered, bought all the journals off their shelf. So, um, and when Borders went out of business, I bought tons of stuff like just books that meant something to me. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to look. I, I try to get the questions. When you color flowers over your beautiful watercolor backgrounds, what do you use to color the details? Watercolor, acrylics, or others? Mm, let, me, let me find an example, and then I'll tell you what I did. Mary, Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Okay, and I'll come back to that if you don't mind. So first off, I'm going to talk about paper. For me personally, and this is just because I work with watercolors and acrylics, I don't work with oils. I don't even know how that would go. I don't work with oil pastels. I work with all pretty much water-based, obviously deco art paints, which are behind me. Which way do I go? Which way do I go? Okay. And I use tons of watercolors. Uh, use Watercolors I use for portability because I can I don't know, paint as I walk. I don't know. So um, currently I am working on this journal, which is one that I sell. And there, there's a reason why I love this particular journal. Well, I like it because it's hardcover. And um, 
This book comes... No, it doesn't. I lied. I lied. I, I like this size is what I'm working in now is 5.5 by 8.5. 8 it fits conveniently in my bag. I always think about could I slip this in my purse with a, with a, um, with a Sharpie and just be uh, on the go. The good news is the pen fits right in here. So I just clip it in there and I have everything with me. Um, Lisa, my web, not my website, my Facebook page, Tracy Winesaffel Studios. Just go there. It's the first post. I could probably even get you there. Uh, it's at, it's where you're watching this now. Sorry, I'm, I, I will give you the link because it's the first post I was trying to figure out. I just put them on sale for tonight. I'm not really in the journal business, but it's really, some of them are hard to find. And so I thought, why not? And I can easily ship them, and they ship right away priority mail. I, Christina, I get them out really quick. Uh, I got a little system now, and I got help. Um, so the reason, these are Grumbacher. This is watercolor. I also enjoy, 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 um, oh, that's watercolor, uh, mixed media paper. So this is the same book, watercolor mixed media paper. So the watercolor is 140 pound paper, so it's a thicker density. And the mixed media paper is 90 pound. They both work tremendously. So I personally um, use both. Uh, and it takes to very well. My watercolor paper, this just is great. Now, the one thing about this watercolor paper is thicker, and this has 30 sheets. This has 40 sheets. So if you're looking for, you know, more, more pages, mixed media. Um, now, here's the big difference with all of these books. In fact, I'll show it with this. So this is the same book, only it's, um, it doesn't have a hardcover. It's just a spiral bound. Uh, the pages come out. Do you see that? They're perforated so that you could work on the pages out, which a lot of times, if I'm doing something, I do like to take it out. I like to, oh, and then they just pop back in. So that is, that's the one thing I love about these books. And I, you just pop them back in and they're in, okay? that That is to me a huge selling feature on these books. I absolutely, absolutely love them. And they come in soft cover and hard cover. Yes, soft cover, hard cover. So these are the hard covers. And this is the one I'm currently working in. And um, people ask me this all the time. Can you paint on both sides? Absolutely. I don't. It's a personal choice. The reason is, as I have a licensing agent that I work with who sometimes says, hey, they would like this piece of artwork for let's say a flag or a mug or something and then I make you know enough to send not one child and get a meal or cost a cup of coffee I'm kidding so that's one reason um, that I don't and and that's just something that's a personal choice for me but you notice this is watercolor paper it works awesome the mixed media paper works fantastic as well but you notice I really love the removable pages. Yes, removable pages are fabulous to work with. And sometimes I, for example, I use um, Jelly Arts. I do mono printing. So I take the pages out. It's just easier and more maneuverable for me. I did, this was a demo that I did live. Most of what you're seeing now are either um, future lessons for your artful journey or there's something I demoed or did for like, uh, for your artful journey. This was last weekend's Wine with Wine, last week. I don't know what this was. No, it might have been morning meditation, one of the two. But you see, they stay in the book. So, and there's, there is the watercolor book comes in, the hardcover comes in two sizes. Here's the other size. It's seven by 10. It's really not that much bigger. So my next book that I'm going to be using is seven by 10. And again, the pages are removable. So that's really hard to find. 
Um, the other thing I love about this book, and I'm just giving you features, is, and I didn't do it. So I like to write my name in the book, and then I like to write the date I started. The day I started this book, which I can easily go back and look, I dumb me didn't write it in there, but I will go write it in there. I do like to keep a sense, um, a diary sense of when I complete or when I start the book. I like to kind of see, this has 30 pages in it. You'd think it would take a month, but it's not how it works. I'm working on 10 other things at the same time. Okay, so um, these two books, watercolor, watercolor, 30 pages, these are the hardcovers, okay? Mixed Media is the same. Mixed Media has more, this one has more of a um, smooth feel to it. I think the, because um, you also have hot press, cold press paper. I won't go into the details on this, but one thing about paper is absorbency and the fibers. Hi, Chris. Okay, whoops. So again, this is 5.5 .5 by 8.5, and this is 7 by 10. So Lisa just ordered two watercolor journals. I hope they're in stock. I'm kidding. Um, so these are the hard covers. I love them. I use them. Now, I do. My other favorites are here. Now, this is on my website. This is an old Canson book, which... Um, this is an off brand. I just had a bunch of these on hand. I have these on sale. When they're gone, they're gone. Uh, hopefully nobody will order. If they're, when they're out of stock, they're out of stock. I can't reorder them. And the pages do not come out of here. Do not. Uh, do not come out of here because they're perforated and you can tear them out, but don't buy this and then tell me the pages are not removable. But it's super cheap. It's like 10 bucks or something. Okay. Then I will answer one second and I will answer questions because I'm seeing they're popping up. Okay. So here are the soft covers. I love them. They have the same feature. Mixed media. I teach. I can't remember if I teach in this size or this size. Sometimes I teach in this size. Sometimes I teach in this size. Um, the 5.5 by 8.5. This is 7 by 10. And I love them. Like, I love that I have them. I love them. Okay. And then the last one that I have is this is watercolor paper. It's, it's, I love this book. It has only 12 pages in it. It's watercolor paper, 140 pound, and this is the soft cover. So it's a less expensive version. They don't, I don't even think they make, this is the, the only size they make in this one. So I stocked this one as well. This is going to be my next book because I want to jump to 7 by 10. Um, but I like the non-committal of 12 pages versus 30, 40, 50. So I, I go through moods that I'm in. Uh, and I can talk about any of the journals that you see here. Uh, I've talked about these before. Uh, these are older. They're really beat up. Some of them are really beat up. But this was my last one I did. And this was more horizontal, but I did, I did paint. Nobody says you can't turn a book around. So, uh, and then somebody was asking me about square because Grumbacher makes six by six, I think. Uh, yes. I will, I will talk right, uh, I'm going to answer, I'll go back and answer those questions. Hopefully I can keep track of them. So uh, I was not overly fond. This is a really well-made book. It's a moleskin. It's real, they're, they're pricey. Um, and it closes and it was really easy to take with me. I don't, it wasn't like, oh, it was, it was not, what I'm showing you are my favorites. And this was a book. Now, this one I didn't, it's, it's held up, but I really did put it through the ringer. It's a Strathmore book. And, yes, you could go all the way across. I didn't. Um, but it did the job. It's staying together. It, it, I really beat the cover up a bit. But it, it did. it's a mixed media book. This is mixed media, okay? And then this one is a Strathmore. More book. Oh, good. The name was in it. And actually, it was already beat up and torn up when I started it. Uh, the 
The one thing I'm going to say about using acrylics or mixed media or water colors is the binding kind of takes a beating. So when I was working on the later pages, if the beginning pages got wet, it would kind of, it didn't do it too bad, but I just had to be conscious of how much wet media I was using, which I don't like to be conscious of anything. It's not that your pages have to stay pristine and I photograph them all and I have them in my memory bank, but I don't know. I'm just like that. Okay. Watercolor versus mixed media, what would be the best for a beginner? I'm going to go mixed media just because it's not that big of a financial commitment. And watercolor pa paper is more expensive. So that's um, one thing. You're paying for the thickness of the paper. It absorbs everything. Nothing goes through it. I mean, for the most part, nothing goes through it. So that's my, that's my philosophy on that is you get what you pay for. So if you're going to go buy a really inexpensive um, album, you could be prepared for it to fall apart. I've had many fall apart, many, many, many fall apart. Um, spiral bound, a downside to the spiral bound is if you're working all across, if you're working across the real estate here, you're obviously going to have this in the middle. I have really bad OCD, so I don't really like the spline, this, the spine to get all nasty, uh, because then I got to look at it until the album's done and then at the pages, it just makes me unhappy. So I tape off the edges, but that's just me. Um, did that answer your question? The other thing about, I love, mix, I love mixed media for like acrylics, but if you're really going to be working in watercolors, uh, watercolor paper takes the watercolors really well. And you can still use acrylic paint over the top of it. hope that makes sense. So, but again, watercolor paper is more expensive. I kind of, to me, this is my like number one go-to beginning journal. If somebody doesn't want to make a, like a big financial commitment, I say to them, do something small because it's not over large. It's not too big and it's not too daunting. And the, and I'm always saying to you guys, what's the big waste if something goes wrong? It's just the cost of a cup, a, a cost of a cup of coffee. It's the cost of, um just a piece of paper. I mean, one out of 30, I don't even know what this costs. But anyway, I hope that answered. Is watercolor better for all kinds of medium? Watercolor will take all kinds of medium, but mixed media will too as well. It, it says it in the names, mixed media. <laughs> Wonder where they got that name. No. Mm. Christina asked, did you paint all the pages in that Strathmore book or did they co come colored? No, I painted them. So I don't want to say any book is better than another. I use Grumbacher. I love them. I love the quality. I've tested them. The other books, I've noticed that their quality wasn't as good and there was a lot of bending of the pages. And how you can prevent some bending is by painting the other side because you fill up the fibers in the back of the page. And I just do it for looks. Um, this book, I, sometimes I love it, sometimes it's not necessary, but see, I just color the back of it. This one had a rainbow of colors, and it's just kind of fun. But then this one I did was all black. And it just, it just, my painting seemed to pop more, but that was just the mood I was in. It's not a requirement. I don't spend as much time anymore painting the backs. Where's my current book? Sorry. Oh, there it is. I don't paint as much on the backs anymore because I'm just so busy painting. I want to be painting. Um, my mixed media pulls up with watercolor. My mixed media pulls. Oh, interesting. Yeah, if you're using watercolor, uh, if you're using watercolors, there's just kind of nothing better. Watercolor paper just makes love to watercolors. Yeah, the other thing about mixed media paper is you can overwork it. But again, for price, for price, um, I'm always conscious about that. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons I mark down 
Somebody was telling me I can't afford a journal. Well, the one that I have, the Canson book, that's only 10 bucks or whatever on my website. It's mixed media. It's a hardcover book. It's a great book. I used to use it for teaching. Um, I just marked them down until they're gone. When they're gone, they're gone. Uh, but I love both. I've really, in my own art, decided that, I mean, I've used lined paper. I've used book text. I've used everything. But I love the feeling of dumping water with watercolors on watercolor paper. Just feels good. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. I asked about square. Nancy, you were the square person. Not, not the square person, the person who asked. Yeah, I would work. Okay. Um, they do. And in my next order, I planned on just putting um, a half a dozen in my order because I don't mind trying something. It would be new for me, too. I uh, ordered another small mixed media. I know, mixed media, you just don't, I don't know. Okay, did I, uh, did I answer? I think there was one other question, and that was Marianne. Uh, sorry, Mary. Did I miss your question, Marianne? Wait, like, when you color flowers, drawings over your blue, beautiful watercolor backgrounds, what do you use to color the details? Watercolor, acrylics, or others? Um, I use watercolor over watercolor, acrylics over watercolor, and a Sharpie. I use watercolor over watercolor, acrylic over watercolor, Sharpie over watercolor. Um, and sometimes I don't even color the background in it's because I love the background so much that here. So this is an example of I didn't like this background and I felt the need to cover it, but I'm not completely. It, this is um, this is um, painter's tape. Uh, I'm not. This was just an exercise. I'm not really pleased with this, but I may, I may be shocked when I take off the painter's tape. But here's an example of a background that I'm just not going to cover. I don't know why. And your Artful Journey members. Okay. Um, anyway, hopefully that answers your question. Oh, okay. And that... Oh, that's the, uh, Annette asked me, why do you use acrylic paints over watercolor, like the paints over watercolor, wait, why, why do you use acrylics over watercolors? Uh, first off, I, it's just something that I've adapted in my art. I think that's what you're asking. Or are you asking, do I choose watercolor paints over acrylics? What's the, so just so you know, I used to work for Deco Art, so that's the paint behind me. I love acrylic paint. I love, love acrylic paint. There's, But it's hard for me to travel with this amount of paints. Now, obviously, you don't need all these paints, and you could take like five bottles, but I'm a little spoiled, so I can go here. Now, there's different effects that I can get with acrylic paint, and I can use different types of brushes and different types of brush strokes. I'm not a big brush stroke person, but I love a good stencil brush and feathering in and floating. Floating is a term um, for adding highlights. Um, so acrylic paints give me that kind of versatility. Now, on the other hand, watercolors give me this versatility of blending different shades and blending the colors together. And okay, um, the small watercolor journal is sold out. Oh, does it say that? Okay, if you guys give me five minutes after, I am placing another order and they ship to me right away. But if something is sold out, drop me an email. Um, I don't even know what my email is. I can throw my email up. If there's something you do want to order, I can let the order go. I'll change the stock. You just have to wait a little bit because I have to. Um, I didn't think. I didn't think about this sale situation until five minutes before I went on, and I didn't even look to see how many books I have in stock. <laughs> I really don't think of things ahead of time. All right. That would be quite odd. I'm going to find my um, email and I am going to go in there. If you give me about, okay, do this. If you guys give me about a half an hour or five minutes after we're done, I'll go in and just change the quantities so that you could order and you can still order it to get it at the sale price. Just give me a little bit of time to ship it. Okay. Because normally I ship them out the day placed or the day after. 
Um, okay, what brand of watercolors do you prefer? Mm, I love Grambacher. I love Prima. I love, uh, uh, let me see what's behind me. A couple I don't like. So Grumbacher, Grumbacher makes them too. Opaque and transparent. I like these. My favorite, oh here, I got my favorites over here. So I wasn't, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are these? The one thing I like about Prima is I like, uh, I love Daniel Smith. Now, for talking tube acrylics, I love Daniel Smith. These are Prima, and they're just, I, I like that they're small. So, small. I am just really big about being able to take stuff with me. I hope I answered that. And then, um, I think I got that question answered. Okay, sorry to be late to the party. Had a visit from my daughter. Love her so much. She's an artist also. Okay, I love to read that. Um... So with your inspiration, I've been trying acrylic more. I love it when it's happening, but after it's flat. Yes, I'm still talking about paint. Advice. Oh, okay. Shadowing, adding dimension, that always helps going in. Um, because if you are, uh, the other thing is blending colors together, blending um, different hues, like different um, blend your blacks, your whites. Um, with them and and using two colors that way you're getting like brush strokes okay uh, the queen of the brush stroke is Donna Dewberry if you want to learn brush strokes Donna Dewberry I am more um, I am more of a Dr. Seuss whimsical whatever comes out of my head artist and I, I realize there is space for me along with all of these amazing, amazing fine artists who may look down on me and go, I don't like her art. And I have had people tell me right to my face at trade shows, I don't like her art. Okay. I'm okay with that. My skin is a little bit thicker and to each his own. And I appeal to some and I don't appeal to others. Um, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I find that there's a little space in this world for me. A little bit. All right. Is watercolor better for jelly arts? Water, okay. Watercolors can be used on jelly art plates, but it's going to bead up. So acrylics are really the best for your jelly plate. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk acrylics, even though I'm not talking about paint tonight. We, we'll have a paint night. How about we talk about paints? I like a great medium bodied acrylic or your craft paints. Your standard craft paints work awesome. Yes. There you go. All right. So could you teach members how to float acrylic lids for shading or how to use aquarellable pencil for shading? Yes, Lisa, that is a future lesson. I'm going to say things of this about floating. Floating is something that I've learned. Um, I am fortunate that I got to work in the decorative painting world. Decorative painters are fantastic. They are very talented. And I got to work, my mentor was Doxy Keller. That woman could paint uh, amazingly. And uh, things like brush strokes, she tried to teach me. I will say tried. Also, my dear friend Darla, who sometimes pops in here and I wish she would, my dear friend Darla uh, came, uh, tried to teach me floating. And when I say tried to, I have the attention span of a gnat. In other words, um, they start teaching and then somebody goes, hey, look, they're making popcorn outside. And I'm like, oh, oh, my God, I can smell it. Oh, my God. No. Um, I'm not really, I wasn't really, um, I wasn't, how do I word this? I do my own shading my own way, and that doesn't mean I'm not willing to learn, but I'm not the person who's going to teach a brush stroke or floating lesson. I can tell you what I do and how I get there, but I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not, I, I, you know what? I will get Darla on and make her a guest, and I'll figure out how to make her live over here where she could give us a lesson. 
See, I'm going to find a way. Um, Deborah said, loved Doxy. She was so nice to me, too. Doxy was all of five foot two. Uh, she recently just passed away, which greatly affected me. And let me just tell you, it's one of the many blessings in my life that I got to work alongside this woman and learn from her. So, yes, Donna Dewberry, I know and adore and same thing. If you can use floating medium and all that other stuff, great. I'm going to give you a little bit of a story about me. I used to be a photographer, and I love photography, and I loved art. Yes, Lisa, I got you noted. Um, I loved photography. And Darla Foreman. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to tell you this little story really quick, and I'm just going to tell you how I came to be me, 601 anyway. So any more questions about paper, I will answer too. I loved photography. I loved, I was a wedding and family photographer. I loved it. And then I started taking a bunch of workshops on photography and how to take the perfect picture and the art of photography. And, um, and, and I was making a business of it and I loved art. And I really said to my friend, at some point there's going to be a fork in the road and I'm going to have to choose that fork. And the one that brings me greater joy is the one I'm going to go with. So the thing about photography was I learned how to take the perfect picture. And then I learned how to look at my photos and realize how it wasn't the perfect picture. Like, this is wrong. My focal point's off. My aperture's off. Manual, this, that. Oh, my God. So um, I learned, I, look, I started to look at my art, and my tagline for my company was, let me tell your story. And I stopped telling people stories. So when I did wedding photography, I would do videos to music. It was just a thing. I stopped telling their story and concentrating on what was wrong with the photos. And then I found myself taking double the amount of photos to get the one perfect picture. And the joy of photography was gone for me. I didn't enjoy it anymore. It became something that I dreaded. And I decided in my life, I don't want to critique myself or do something. I want to free myself in my art. I don't want to be looking at it and critiquing myself constantly. So when the fork arrived in the road, I went art and I don't have one minute of regret. So for those of you who are learning and brush strokes, I commend you. I want it, but I don't want to be stuck in it. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Um, I also got to dip my toes in with the decorative painters and the fine art painters at NAMTA and learn. So I'm always learning and I'm always going, okay, that is what I want to continue to do. And I don't want to be my worst critic. I don't want that in my life. I want to enjoy. I paint to relax, to release, and to enjoy. So I don't paint to paint the Sistine Chapel. I'm not a mural painter, but I fit in my own little space. And that's where I hope, um, that's where I connect. Does that make sense? I think that was not a lot of making sense. <laughs> I swear this is having up to. It looks, the glass changes colors. Um, yeah, um, I have a perfection problem that my whole family has and most are medicated for. <laughs> I don't need something else in my life that I, um, and for any of you who are decorative painters, do not think for a second I am saying no way, Jose. But for me, um, there's space for both of us. The other thing is the decorative painters just can paint 10 times better than me using my drawings. <laughs> yes, I, I, am, I am always learning, always reading. Um, I'm also connecting with various people through what I'm doing. Say um, I connected with... Um, I don't think she's a doctor. I think she's a psychologist. But she uses art therapy for cancer patients. 
That's my joy, not cancer. <laughs> my joy is connecting with people who are in that space. So I guess that is a long story. Anyway, I have that too, and they call me Miss Perfect. It's embarrassing. Carol, I cannot tell you how horrified I am when I've heard that. Like, oh, you always have to be perfect. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So that's my purpose. Uh, Christina says, I like the quick and easy stuff. Not too much fine detail for me enough. Yes, to be. And I love decorative painting. Like, just, just so you know, um, oh, uh, I am honored to be in, in, a, in a magazine. So here, you know. This is my art. This this does okay. Um, this is a, I would say, Painting World magazine. I'm in here. And this is just, I mean, I and I know the cover girl too, Maureen Baker. I know her too. Friend. Um, but I just know that, see, here I am. I can fit in there. It's just in a different little space, in a little corner. But I can fit. <laughs> So there's room for all of us. Yes, um, I'm going to give you one example. The other thing I want to remind you, do not feel, because you get an art journal, don't feel like you're stuck in that art journal, okay? I just ordered aprons, and I'm going to show you, oh, I'll show you the apron I'm working on. Um, and I realize when you paint in an art journal or you create. Oh, I love Maureen too. Okay. There, Christina is one. She's a decorative painter. Christine no, Christina knows me and knows that there is there are lessons to be learned both ways. Like I do believe the decorative painters looked at me in a new way and went, "Hmm, never thought about that." So it was it's really a good collaborative space. Okay. Um very talented too. Yes, seminars. See, this is great. Okay, so I want to encourage you to, when you have art, as many art journals as I do, you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you're going to go to paint something. Open up your own dang book, look at it, and be inspired by what you do. So this is an apron that I'm painting right now. Um, and I can show you where this was inspired by because I just... What is a decorative painter? Christina, answer that question because it is a type of painting. I would think Bob, Bob Ross was a decorative painter. Bob Ross has his supplies. Bob Ross, he's a decorative painter. Only well, he did happy trees. Okay, so I'm going to show you. I'm doing a series of 25 aprons. And I am going to sell them because I've been asked about a hundred times, but my friend today said, hey, save them for the Art and Wine Festival. Okay, see this drawing right here? So this is me. I drew this on an airplane. Okay, and look at that. So do you recognize that? Ah, inspiration, inspiration. Okay, I also am painting masks, so tell me. Uh, Nancy, I used a fabric pen and I don't normally paint, I don't normally draw them first. Um, I normally paint them, then draw uh, over the top of them with a liner pen. So, uh, I'll answer questions about the aprons another time. It's nice to know how to do stroke work, but I love the dimensional look of decorative designs. Yes. I started as a fine artist, the Ohio, oh, Deborah, I'm not going to say the Ohio State University, Ohio State <laughs> had to throw in. I'm not saying it, and you made me say it. Okay, but I've evolved over the years and love to do it all. I'm always learning. Art journaling is something new for me and loving it. What paint are you using? I'm using fabric paints. I will answer more questions about the aprons. I don't want to get sidetracked too much because it is 609. So, uh, now she made me use. I, I, they are not the Ohio State University. When I was going to school, they were Ohio State. You never had to put the word the in it. Okay. All right. Did I answer all your questions about the paper? I really, uh, I know I get sidetracked. I can't help myself. So the journals are, you have no obligation to buy from me. This is not, uh, you're supporting an artist, which is great. 
uh, you have no obligation. I do recommend, though, you kind of um, kind of figure out what speaks to you. The other thing, and I'm going to tell you guys who are perfect, you do not have to use the same journal and think that on your display case that you have to have the same size journal. I have the weirdest mindset where I go, okay, if I pick a journal, if you look at my scrapbook albums, I, got, I, I was so perfect that I had to have them all the same. Do I ever frame any of the paintings that I do? Uh, yes and no. My art journal pages stay in my art journal. I do paint on canvases. I do sell canvases. And I'm lucky because I have a framer, Bill, the frugal, frugal framer in my town, who is an awesome framer. So I have and I do. I got out of that a little bit. If you look, oh, you guys, I don't know if you'll be able to see this because I don't have my other, let's, let's, let me not tip anything over. See, look up there. Those are teaching. Oh, those are my scrapbooks too. See, my kids have scrapbooks. That's when I was perfect, but now I'm not perfect. Okay. The answer is yes. Oh, Lisa asked which paper would be better for jelly. Uh, uh, Lisa, jelly art, uh, jelly mono printing. Um, mono printing or jelly arts, printing, mono printing, printing, any paper, copy paper, mixed media paper. I wouldn't, now me personally wouldn't use watercolor, not because I wouldn't want to, but because it's acrylic. And I think that's an expensive paper. Uh, jelly arts, you can use regular copy paper, mixed media paper. There shouldn't be a struggle there. Any paper, it takes copy paper brilliantly. And I use mixed media paper with it. So, there. sorry about that if I missed that question. Linda said, we love Bill the frugal framer. It's hard to say that. He is fantastic. Um, I'm very lucky that I, deli paper, another one. There's another one. Uh-huh, deli paper or uh, parchment paper. Two awesome, there we go. Oh, I love paper. I love the feel of paper. I love the smell of paper. I love that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so I think I answered all of your questions. But that's just some of the stuff I've been working on. And just remember, when you order an art journal for me, I do ship it normally the next day. If I'm out, um, I will just drop you an email saying, oh, when my next shipment comes in, it goes out the day I get it. Okay, I'm struggling with jelly arts. Oh, Lisa, we'll do something with that too. Um, go to their, their YouTube channel. YouTube channel um, for Jelly Arts is tremendous. I'm going to be on live, not next week, but the following week. Happy to help you. I work for them as well. Parchment paper works great too. Parchment paper works great. There you go. Don't be afraid to try. I know Linda and our group too uses uh, the Jelly Arts plate. It's just experimentation. That's why I say copy paper because it's the least expensive paper and you can do both sides and practice and feels what, do what good, uh, feels what good is good for you. Oh, have you ever made handmade paper? No. I have bought it and oh my god, hold on. <laughs> I have so many journals, it's embarrassing. So, um, here. I, this is, okay. Do you guys ever buy stuff for a rainy day or a special occasion? I am infamous for this. Um, so I bought this for a special occasion. It's handmade watercolor paper. And I, oh, I know. It has actually has like the tissue paper in between it. And it's super heavy. And it's got that tattered edge. I'm afraid. But I bought it. I love 
handmade paper. Um, but I don't quite, I'm going to paint in this and I just need to go for it. I need to be, I need to be example. It is so gorgeous. I bought this at a show once and I just said, oh my God, like, oh, but then I look at it and go, oh, maybe I won't be good enough for this paper. But I'm good enough for this freaking paper. I'm going to bust it out one day. But for now, I'm going to put it. So that answers your question about if I, sometimes if I get the opportunity and I see unique things or they go, you know, I just kind of buy them. Look at me, tucking it back into its journal condom. <laughs> If we're still talking about this journal a year from now, everybody should scold me. Look at it. It's just, and it's eight by eight. It's square, just paint the dang paper. <gasps> this is such an example of me saying, it just, it, it don't be afraid to use it. I love, oh my God. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it out. Um, I'm gonna keep it out. And then, um, because I do hate buying supplies for a rainy day. You're more than good at <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. This turned into a reverse situation. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so crazy. But um, I know. It's just one of those things where, you know what I should have done is said, I'll buy two. There was only one there. Darla Foreman. Darla Foreman. I just called you out. Darla Foreman, could you please say hello? I, I'm going to, um, I know she just stepped in here, but she's probably going to be like, what did I do? But it is 6.17. I'll let you go. I love Wednesdays so much. I do. I love everything about it. I love this opportunity to connect. It is a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. This is, this is like when I give my girlfriend advice. Darla. Do you remember giving me a floating um, lesson? <laughs> Stacy, you can rewatch the whole thing. It, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so this is proof. Yeah. <laughs> So there's, I have very wise friends in the decorative painting world, and they they have tried to teach me, <laughs> and realize that I have the attention span of a gnat, and I can make fun of everything. Yes. So, uh, Darla is a very dear friend of mine. I just talked to her yesterday. If you want to check out her event, it's called Painting Palooza in Oklahoma. So. Um, I, I love her dearly, but we were talking about decorative painters. I know. I can float, but it is in a pool. <laughs> so, Darla, we're going to have to figure out how I can get you on live. Uh, oh, she tried brush strokes. Oh, my God. Doxy with the brush strokes. Doxy would, like, pay attention. <laughs> Loading your brush, unloading your brush. Oh. So much work <laughs> but here's an example of Darla who's a very um, a wonderful painter and Doxy where there's room for all of us and we can all exist together there is an example but I will figure out a way where one day I put Darla on the spot if Darla has Skype we could do something where she comes on live and she um, teaches us how to float, back, back float, backstroke, you know, all that other crap. <laughs> See, I know the word loading. You know what? That is true. Um, here's another thing that the decorative painters taught me. Um, I remember I went to my first or second show and, um, they, in their nice, lovingly yelling, motherly way, said, you need to use, oh, I need to do it in Darla's accent. You need to learn how to use a liner brush. <laughs> She's got the best Oklahoma accent. Love you, Darla. Um, 
so I they showed me how to use a liner brush and I was in awe because a liner brush is better than any Sharpie any day with all the control you get and it takes a lot of patience and learning and I went home and practiced and the next year I went back and I was like look what I can do <laughs> liner 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 <laughs> do you remember that liner liner I could do that <laughs> So there you go. So it was, we were talking about you earlier, Darla. Today I was talking about my favorite art journals, and we got to talking. Um, but uh, I want handmade paper. This is so, yes. I did listen. When they would teach, I would listen. Even on the floating and loading and unloading and uh, don't put your paintbrush in the water and leave it sit there. Oh, that was a scolding. Okay. Never forgot that one. Uh, you guys, I will look for handmade paper. I bet you I could get that from this company. <gasps> I'm going to look for it. I think they make it. I'll order it. Using a liner brush is a superpower. If you have the power, it does change your world. Yeah, it really does. And that's one thing I do try to tell people. Now, floating, I can float. Don't ever leave your paintbrushes in water. It, it just causes a bunch of people to get mad at you. Okay? For those of you who are interested in decorative painting, look up Oklahoma Painting Palooza. I'm telling you, you'll learn. Okay. Uh, I don't want to make handmade paper. I want to order handmade paper. Or I would like Annette to make handmade paper and send me a jar of fresh garlic as well. <laughs> what is floating? This, Laura. Floating is a way of adding uh, shadowing. Is that what it is, Darla? Is that how you um, describe that? Other than the back float in a pool with a yummy drink? Acrylic paint. Okay. Uh, okay. Brush companies love that mistake. Oh, I know. Dynasty used to love that. Okay, kids. It is 623. This conversation needs to be brought to an end. Otherwise, I could sit here and talk all night long about the stuff I love so much. But thank you so much. And thank you to my decorative painters who always made me feel part of their community. They're awesome. And there's lessons to be learned everywhere. I'm telling you, even when you pick up books like this um, and you figure out every, the art, the type of art in here is so amazing. Um, really amazing. So uh, this is another thing. Love you too, Darla. Thank you for popping on. I was talking about you earlier. Okay, this was fun. I hope it was educational in some way. If you have any questions about my favorite art journals, don't hesitate to let me know. I should take my email down because I'll have 6,000 emails. And don't forget, just tonight, I'll leave it up. I'll wake up in the morning and take all the sale prices down. Um, I will go in and change the inventory. If anything says it's sold out, I will just let you know it's sold out. And... Um, just be patient because I have to place another order and I'm going to look for the handmade paper journal, the this book because I got it from that company. And also I will look for something that's square. I had a couple requests for square journals and I'm willing to try anything once. Thank you for giving me the confidence to try. Okay, people, I am going to paint something in this in the next month or so. Let's not save our supplies for rainy days because guess what? We're going to be dead one day and we can't take it with us. And if we do take it with us, I've got a boatload of crap. They're going to have to dig a very large hole for me. <laughs> Stacy says she's the crazy owl lady and the crazy art lady. It's a good crazy to be. It's a really good crazy to be, Stacy. And thanks for picking up your journal. It's cool to be square. Guess what, guys? All those athletes had to sit down during COVID and all of us, you know, nerdy painter girls were standing in the back and now we're doing this. It's our turn. <laughs> 
Okay, you guys think square is cool. I'll order the square ones too. I'll place my order tomorrow and that way I have everything in. Um, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for bringing the most awesome questions in the world. I couldn't, I couldn't, there's no reason to show up if you guys don't, um, if you're not here, but every week it just gets more amazing. Um, Deborah said, I get worried about the kids having to go through your art supplies when you're gone. Okay, do me a favor. Start using them. Start using them, sister. And your kids won't mind a bit. It brought you such great joy. I'm telling you. I will tell you that now. Mm-mm-mm. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go eat my salad. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Thank you so much. And I will go in and fix the inventory. Now, if you decide to place an order, everything is 10% off. That's only tonight. I don't really do sales. I don't make a lot of money. It's not my thing. Uh, my thing is teaching you guys to be creative. Okay. Um, I will talk to you all soon. I really enjoyed this. I really did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Good night, farewell, get painting.